In this one, we're going to have a look at GitHub Actions and automated pipeline builds in a way which relates to the work which we've done so far. So the steps I'd like to go through are these. When we merge into the main branch, I would like the test to be run, and then I'd like to have the two images built, then log in to the registry, i.e. Docker Hub, and then push our images which we've built to the registry. So those images are, of course, our PHP image and our Nginx image, which will be built from the Docker files that we created. In real life, following on from that, the next step will be to push or deploy our code to whatever cloud service we use. I'm not gonna do that because there's all different cloud services and all different uh, configurations and way of doing things, which can be quite error prone. I wanna stick to keeping this as a Docker tutorial. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the repository in GitHub and I want to be able to add my Docker Hub login details so that when we go to do the build and the push stage, mainly the push stage to the registry, then GitHub Actions is able to do that. It has those credentials. And so the way we do this, if you go to your repository and you click on settings, and then part way down the page, you'll see this here, secrets. So we're going to store it in secrets. And there's the one for GitHub Actions. And so you click New Repository Secret and you can give it whatever you want. As you can see, I have done this before. So for this one, I'm gonna go with Docker username. My Docker username is this. So not sensitive information, but my Docker password is sensitive. I'll create a new repository secret for that. So Docker password. I'll just type in some gibberish here behind the scenes. I'll put in my real password. And then once you've done that, you just click add secret. And then once you've done that, you should be able to see your repository secrets down at the bottom there. Next, we need to create the file which GitHub Actions will read in order to perform these steps, which we spelled out here. And so very important how you actually name things here. We need to create a folder called .github. So in the very root, dot github and inside of there you then need to create a folder called workflows again important how we actually name these if you don't name them correctly then github won't know where to find the file then in here we can create yaml files so as long as they are yaml files it doesn't matter what we call these github will just go over them one by one in sequence and so if you had three yaml files in there it would read three yaml files we're just going to need the one I'll call this deploy.yaml. That's quite a common name to see for this kind of thing. So again, I'm not going to make you watch me type out a deployment file line by line. That would get very boring. I'm just going to paste in something which I've used earlier and which I know that works. And we'll go through this line by line. So I'll just make it a bit small so everything fits on one line. Sorry if the text is a bit small for you. Okay, so the way this works is you give your action a name and then you say the conditions under which you want the jobs in this file to be executed. So here we specify just the one condition and we are saying on push branches main. What does that mean? It means that when we push to the main branch, then we want the jobs in this file to be executed. And so you can specify multiple jobs in here but I've only got the one so the next key is jobs and I've named it build you can name your jobs whatever you like we're just going to call this one build and then the steps which we include in this build job are going to tell github actions exactly what we would like it to do when we push to the main branch and so this first bit runs on from the github docs a runner is a server that runs your workflows when they're triggered each runner can run a single job at a time and GitHub provides Ubuntu, Linux, Microsoft Windows and Mac OS runners. So we've gone with Ubuntu latest. Okay, so this next line uses Actions Checkout V3, again from the documentation, Actions. An action is a custom application for the GitHub Actions platform that performs a complex but frequently repeated task. So this is a complex but frequently repeated task. Someone's gone to the trouble of creating an action which will do it for us, and so that is why we are using this. Let's talk through the steps I've created. So you can actually name them, which makes things quite self-explanatory. Here we are installing Composer dependencies. 
and then we are running the test. So we're not installing them inside a container, we're doing the sort of inside of GitHub Actions and running the test, because remember these are dev dependencies and I don't want my dev dependencies inside my container. If we go back to our composer JSON file, you'll see in the script section here, I just came up with this uh, script name, which is an alias for vendor bin PHP unit. And so if you wondered what that was that you saw there, then that's basically that. And then we come on to the interesting part here. And for this, we are building our image. We are targeting the app part of the Docker file. We are tagging it with Gary Clark PHP Composer 1.1. So I'll change this to two, so you can see the difference when we go and look at this on Docker Hub. And again, we're specifying the file from which to build the image from. And then we do the exact same thing for our Nginx Docker file. Docker build, we give it a name and a tag of 1.0 and we're saying use this Nginx Docker file in order to build this. And then we are logging in to Docker, logging into Docker Hub. As you can see, this is where we get to use our secrets, which we specified. And so the way to use secrets inside of one of these files is like this. And so it is secrets dot and then the secret name. We've done the same thing for the Docker password. The command itself should look familiar to you because it's one that we ran before when we were pushing our image up. You docker login hyphen you then pass the username hyphen p means password. Okay, and then next, this is quite interesting. This is where we actually push those images. So I'm just going to change this to 1.2 because that's what we've made it. So we're pushing our PHP composer image and then we're pushing our Nginx PHP image. Behind the scenes, I've committed those changes. So I'm now going to push this up to GitHub. Okay, so excuse the really long branch name that I've used here, but I'm naming the branches after each lesson and the lessons need to describe what we're actually doing in each lesson. So that's the reason for that. Let's hit go on this. Okay, cool. So you'll see that I've pushed to this branch here, GitHub Actions Automated Pipeline Builds. That doesn't mean that our build will start yet, because if you remember the rules which we set for this, is when we push to the main branch. So let's go over to GitHub and we'll do that manually. Here I am in the Docker PHP repo. As you can see, I've pushed this change a minute ago, so I can go and compare and do a pull request. So I'm gonna create a pull request to pull this branch into the main branch and that should kick off our GitHub action. I'm not gonna leave a comment for this, I'm just gonna start it rolling. And then we just need to merge this pull request and that will kick everything off. So this is a typical kind of workflow. In reality, there would be some protection on the main branch so that a pull request is always required. I didn't actually have that in place, but I kind of mimicked it. If you want to learn more about collaboration with Git and GitHub, then I've actually got a full course on the subject at garyclark.tech and that course is free for my mailing list subscribers. So be sure to check that out. Let's go ahead and do this. So I click Merge PR, then I click Confirm Merge. The GitHub Actions, blah, 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 branch can be safely deleted. Okay, let's delete that. And then we need to go up at the top, you'll see these tabs. We want the Actions one. And as you can see, we have a GitHub Action has been kicked off. And it can take a while because there's quite a bit of setup and stuff like that. Sometimes with like production builds, these things can take, you know, quite a few minutes. Okay, and it is complete. It says it took 55 seconds. Let's go and have a look at our build and make sure that there weren't any errors. We've got a green tick, but always check just in case. And so the kind of things you're looking for, which can fail, are things like running your tests. So we're gonna look at them. We can see one test, one assertion. Great stuff. We've built our images. Let's have a look, pulling all the layers, You'll see these little bits of red here, but these are just warnings. There's nothing in there to be scared about. You'll notice here we're installing all of our dependencies, our composer dependencies. I'll not bore you by going through absolutely everything, but you can see here each step of the build with a little tick to say that this has completed successfully. And so if this has completed successfully, then that means that we should see our images on the Docker Hub. Let's go and check that now. So over on Docker Hub, if I give this a refresh, Okay, I can see my uh, images which were pushed 
two minutes ago. So we have our Nginx PHP one and our PHP Composer. Let's just go and check that this has a correct tag. Yep, so we have version 1.0, 1.1 and 1.2, which is the one that we pushed two minutes ago. This is really cool. And if you're wondering why we did that as part of our code merge, it's like I said before, when we are pushing to some cloud computing solution in production, I don't want to be building those images. What I want to do is grab those images from the registry. So every time we merge our code now, we know that we have the latest version of those images. So that's what we can use in our Docker Compose file for production. And that's something that we're going to have a look at next. Congratulations on making it this far. We've covered a lot of ground and you've taken in a lot of information. So sincerely, well done. If you haven't liked the video so far, then make sure that you do that now. You're probably wondering what are our next steps. The good news is I am recording bonus material. I'm going to upload that to garyclark.tech. Don't worry, it will still be free. The subjects which I'm covering at the moment are multiple Docker Compose files for overrides. And I'm also going to do some stuff on framework integration. I'm still taking requests. So if you have any of your own, let me know what those are and I will see you over at garyclark.tech.